Okay, we are talking about the hair today. So let's take a look. Now, hair is separated into three groups. On the left side, as you can see, there are the bangs, hair side, and hair back. And uh, I can turn them off for you to see. Uh, so this is my hair, this is my bangs. So the hair in front and including the whole gay is also here. And then I have the hair side, which is just two stripes. And they do a lot, even though they're small parts, they make a lot of difference. And there's also the hair back, which is behind the face. And as I turn the head, you would see some hair back is sh uh, appearing. And so let's start with, um, I suppose you have all things uh, implemented already, so they're already in position. They're ready to, to, to be animated, but uh, anyhow, you should turn them off first and start with the hair back because it's easier to do and also it sets the positioning, uh, sets the center, and when you do the other two parts, you will know in relative to hair back uh, where they should go. All right, so uh, hair back includes drawing one drawing which is which is just the hair back and then there's the hair back transformer so this, this waffle grid here does that is controlling uh, just the hair back if I highlight it you can see that there are nine dots in angle X and angle Y and if you move them around that's basically what you see so what I did was just go to the left side, go to the right side, and you know, just shift them a few dots. So, all right, all right. Actually, I should, I should mention this, is that when you go to the left, you turn the head to the left, your hair back goes right, all right? So it's opposite direction. When your dot goes to the left side of angle X, you should move your hair to the right, hair back to the right, and show some part here. Uh, I, I believe I actually, <clears throat> I should have updated the material because I recall in early uh, tutorial videos, I think I did one episode on filling up, filling up the darker shade in this part, which should be, because now it's showing off, but it's cutting off at this point. It shouldn't be, uh, it should be having a, a sh uh, this kind of dark brown shade all, all, all the way here. Anyhow, um, maybe I'll add that in later, but uh, that is left, that is right, that is up. When you go up, the hair goes down, and you see a little bit of this uh, backside, depending on what kind of model you have. Uh, if you have long hair, then obviously it would, you know, it would still show. If you have short hair, it might show something that originally don't show up. And when you go, when you do the uh, lower the head, you don't have to shift upward that much. You just need to. Uh, narrow down the left and right horizontal narrow down the horizontal uh, of the bottom bottom half of it so you see these two corners that is that is sort of pushing in that's all you have to do just cave it in just cave it in up upside and when you go to the left just cave in this part go to the right cave in this part that's basically the hair back now once you got that set in um, you can start working on the hair bangs <clears throat> all right so here we turn on the hair bangs let's see what it has it has the drawing two drawings and some of you don't have the this little stripe here so a uh, whole uh, if your character design doesn't have it you don't need it so I like it so I just I put it in uh, if you've seen my live 3d viewer uh, seeing the finished product, this little piece here actually bounces around like sort of like a jello uh, state and it's sort of giving the kind of uh, animation. So that's what it's for, but I can turn it off for the purpose of this video. And then let's just look at the front bang. So as you can see, it's sort of like this half globe here. Um, let's go to the transformer because there is no there is no perimeter for hair for for the bangs there's only um, the nine dots in angle x and y for bangs transformer and pretty simple just the opposite of what you just did uh, it follows the head 
So once you have the head in, it's pretty easy. You just have to you have to move to this side and shift it to this side. You will see your face already shifting over here, but the bang is still in the center, and you just need to uh, refix it to a nice spot, and that's it. You know, up, right, down, left, refix it. Just try to minimalize how much you do with the dots, to, with the changes, because I mean, it's a general rule of live 2D. You do not, you do not want to have too many details changes. The the minimal, uh, the less changes you have to the dots, the more precise, so the more smooth it will look like. All right. So what I did here was when I moved to the right side, I cave in a little bit just to match this curve here, because as you can see, originally it was outwards like this, and it sort of, I think it breaks too much. So I'm squeezing in a little bit on this part, turn to this side, I'm squeezing it here and there. And uh, especially the four diagonal corners, I was I, I did a little bit more work to make sure everything looks right. And move it around and see if it's okay. You may see a little bit of bleeding right here. So the face, which is between the front and the back, is start to show up here. But since I know that I have the side bangs, I, I have the side hair to cover it up so I don't like as long as you don't have like major part out, it should be fine. And also the ears, the ears are slightly off the face, but that's fine because I have the side hair. Once you got those in, you can start with the hair side. Now let's look at hair side, what it has. It has three transformers and two materials. The two materials are the left, the left strand, which is on the right side, and the right strand, which is on the left side, and each has one transformer over them. And these transformers are directly under side hair adjustment transformer, which is this piece. This is called the side hair adjustment, and this controls both. And this deformer is under neck transformer. Now, neck transformer controls angle Z majorly, right? I mean, it's only control angle Z. And, but you still need this parent perimeter on for hair side hair adjustment. What it does is it sort of put um, it, it does a little bit of adjustment. Okay, it does the the balancing out. All right. So as you as you put it in the if you, once you have this linked to the neck transformer, as you move to the left side, you find that your all your uh, your side hairs actually turn this way. So it's it's sort of tilted around 40, 35, 40 degrees, and for physics purposes, it should be actually balancing it out. So it would automatically, um, because of gravity, it would sort of turn into this shape instead. So what you need to do is once you turn to the left side, you tilt it uh, back to a flat, flat state. You may need to move things a little bit, a little bit maybe like this, just to make sure it doesn't curve over. Like it's because of, you know just just law of physics and gravity all that, so make sure it's working fine and do the other side, also the same purpose. And you are done with hair adjustment. Now go to the right and left side and let's take a look at them. They are, they have their angle x and angle y on, and that is when you turn your hair or actually let's move it back to normal state. And when you turn your head, uh, this is controlling the <clears throat> both strands to move to their uh, respective position. All right. So once you're at this point, you turn them on and you move your head around. You realize that your strands are st are still in the middle. That's what you gotta do now. You need to move them to the right position. You may need to do some adjustments, like I did. Um, once I turn it to this side, uh, I curve this corner a little bit higher so that it doesn't extend too much. I think I probably have to move this a little bit to the left. Yes. All right, so I have this, and then I have the right side and do it on this side as well. Um, and then up and down. When I'm going up, I stretch a little bit. I'm going down, also cave in a little bit. And that's about it. It's 
pretty much just go with your eyes. Whatever you're seeing, it's a final result anyway. So uh, if you see something is not right, you need to adjust them. Just go ahead and go with your art sense. All right. So go this. I'm gonna do this as well. <clears throat> and there you go. You got your left and right done. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me double check if there's anything. All right. So the material has the hair side. Uh, parameter on and the hair side is basically what you're seeing right there it wiggles the hair this would apply to the default physic physic control in live 2d viewer so how you do this first you turn on the parameters parameters so you have negative one and one and zero three points all right for both both of them and then you use the uh, to dot the what do you call this the transform deform path you put in deform path like maybe this all right so you have more on this side you have the dots eventually grow closer as they uh, scales downwards and then you need to move to this side and then just curve it up all right just curve up your your hair strand and do the same for this oops and then do the same for this side put in the dots and then just move it over and shift it up so you ha this is how you um, have an sort of a tool for making those curves so that they don't look awkward and after you're done you can delete them and you keep them around for uh, for changes afterwards it some people keep them I mean the official sample keeps the blue dots and uh, I don't have to I feel like and there's also one uh, called the hair back which is basically uh, the same for uh, the sort of the same for the back hair if you have long hair it's either a ponytail or two strands or a full long hair if you have those just put them in but obviously you want to do that on the hair back material all right so we have the hair back material if you want to, I can put it in too I mean I can have three points here <clears throat> all right and if left means when your character uh, swings her head I forgot it I think it's I think it's automatically in reverse when you have the physics apply but what I usually do as I just follow the official sample is that when it goes when you shift your left side of the uh, perimeter you just do the left and right is right so there's no need to you know hack your mind and all that uh, I can also do the hair back I can first I'm gonna lock everything else and just the hair back I'm look at a material and I'm going to select some dots over here I can do like oops like that and I'm going to do this do a little bit more and I'm gonna move them in all right so let me try to put this on does it work this way no it doesn't work that way I don't I can pair those parameters but anyhow it, it should now when the character move move her head the side here might bounce a little bit I can also do this side to balance it out um, but yeah I can do that too so that's for the hair back that's for the hair front all the transformers are linked ultimately to the neck transformer not the face or anything or head go directly directly to the neck so the z-axis is what is controlling all right and once you got all those in uh, you are done with your hair I think yeah you're done with the hair because that's 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 about it uh, I can also talk about the little strand there at Hoge since some someone some of you might also have that uh, basically I turn it on it's very simple I have I created my own perimeter here standing on its own and how I do that is by setting go to set perimeters and create a new one I think new value free version max is 30 you have a sign 24 that's, that's fine right 
yeah, that's fine. I only have 25, I can make up to 30. And I just made one, it's called Ahoge. And I have the ID change, description, default value. Default value is negative one, or uh, it's between minimum one and positive one. That's for the hair, all right? So once you got that in, uh, press OK. And there you go, a new parameter of your own. And then turn on the three points. I have it wiggle this side and that side, also with the deform path tool. And I just have them in. You know, it's wiggle this way, wiggle this way, and that's it. The transformer or of this strand, basically it's positioning. So as I moved ahead, I would um, go to the relative position. Also, it may change the distortion a little bit because it's sort of poking outwards. So uh, it, the proportion might ch might not go uh, scale directly with the rest of the body. Sort of like, also if you go to the other side, it would it's sort of like it thins out and then suddenly bam, turn to the other way. So that that's kind of flipping motion happening right there. All right. And once you get that in, you also have the wiggle and also these parts in and that's that. All you got to do rest is the body and I'll talk about that next lesson. Uh, have fun with the hair. The hair is, to me, the hair is the most, it's the fun, it's the, it's the main juice of uh, Live 2D, all right? So also be careful of uh, color shape uh, bleeding. I have a lot of trouble with that right now. As you can see, uh, if I turn the head this way, uh, you see some bleeding here. It doesn't match here and also here it sort of have some broken color pieces crashing. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it at this point. If I, if I forcefully stress this part to move over here and match this line, it also stretches everything else unless I do it manually dot by dot on a material. So I don't use transformer and I actually use the material and just match this part. First of all, that's a, that is a lot of work. Secondly, a, a lot, a, like I said in the last episode, if you do that, if you have multiple perimeters active in the same material, your workload will grow by exponentially. Everything you have to do, you have to do it nine, five times more. So I won't do that. I cannot match these colors, but that's that. I can teach about, I can do some patching, um, but for, for even for this case, it would be a lot of work. So I don't even see the purpose of that. Uh, what I would suggest actually for your case, when you design your character, do not have color shading like mine. All right, if you, if you, you might make a mistake this time, but try to remember uh, how would the work like the how you work the the front and the side and the back of the hair. Next time when you design a character, try to avoid those spots to have color changes. All right. So I, when I drew this color, this when I colored this character, I just have this hair piece colored this way, shade this way. I didn't think of what it would look like when I moved the hair around. Now this is a problem because afterwards uh, there might be some bleeding, there might be some uh, color mismatch, distortion and all that and that's a problem so I should have thought things through. Uh, it's a mistake that I cannot do anything now. Alright so uh, hopefully you don't have this problem. If you follow the official samples uh, they may show a standard way to color the hair and that's that, that how, how you can avoid these problems in Live 2D. If I figure out a way to compensate the problem, I will let you know. Otherwise, I will stick with this for now. Anyhow, have fun with the hair and I'll see you guys next lesson. We'll, we will be talking about the body.